first on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Is there any amendments to the agenda this evening? Not that I know. Mm -hmm. Nope. Move to approve the agenda as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 There are no appointments this evening, so I guess we'll open it up to public comment. Don't everybody jump at the same time. <laughs> Just a comment, Doug Marshall. Um, I have been riding around on some of the roads and I have been checking out on the Sanders Road. And they have done a really good job up through there. And the board has been going where it's supposed to be going and been going off. And also on Camp Brook where they pushed up under the guardrails. That has started to cheat off like it's supposed to. There's no cutoffs early. Everything is working really nice up there. Oh, so great. Just mm -hmm. passing that on. So. That's okay. great. Yeah, I was happy they got nice right up above your place uh, under the guardrail. It looked good there. So, yeah, that's good. East Bethel, take a tool out there. Yeah. Oh, you got to go. Go oh, see. Yeah. Go take a look at Factory Hill and uh, the first part of Randolph Center Road. It looks good. They got the paving done. I just wrote to the state. I don't know when they'll line stripe it. A couple of years probably. But, but, they, uh, but it looks good out there. Um, and then uh, WB is going to start out on Gilead and uh, do the one side, take off the berm, haul that stuff away under the guardrails, uh, remove a tree. Um, then he's going to go up by Brink and get some of that rock out of there. And hopefully we'll be able to use some of that rock to put to move it from up there at Brink down onto uh, Watershed Bridge, because we're armoring that bank. So he thinks some of that big rock he removes, he can use down there to armor the bank, which would be nice. Um, uh, uh, Brink. Oh, okay. So that's what we got going on right now. So he'll go to Gilly, then like a Watershed Bridge, he'll armor that. And um, the fire department's gonna wash off Watershed Bridge. They're gonna wash that down for me in the next couple of weeks. And then uh, we've we'll got to get someone to come in and you know, I wanted, we got to see what the top looks like underneath all the dirt. So, so we'll see how that goes. But so that's what you got to the but yeah, go to East Bethel, Doug. Go to East Bethel. <laughs> I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm going to find there. Yeah. We won't have to go to work. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, if they, they were taking it apart when we were there last week. Yeah, the dam. I, I don't know if they're gone. I know they've been working on it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's gone now? Oh, it is gone? I wasn't sure. Yeah, it could could totally yeah. be. I haven't been out. They 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 were supposed to do that project last year, and then the only thing they're doing for us is they're going to remove and salvage our dry hydrant or for us that we have a hydrant out there. Dry. So he was um, Greg uh, Russ from Watershed. He was going to take that out so we could reuse it somewhere else. That way, I can get it to the fire chief, and he's got to find a new spot in East Bethel somewhere. So hopefully, but yeah, we were out. There was somebody out there. Yep. Any other public comment? All right, move on to our first agenda item is the tax sale information. So you have to, you have to, um, per the statute, you have to authorize me to contract with Stitzel Page and Fletcher as the town's attorney for the tax sale. So um, moved. All right. <laughs> Second. All in favor? Go ahead. Aye. Aye. I assume it doesn't matter. They're using boilerplate, but they've called us a city council. Not a select board on page three. On page three. Are you, is that Are you talking the about the request for designation? You're oh, you're talking about power. something else. Oh, you're talking about the... Updated the, scope of services. Okay, about the audit. Okay. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. fine. Well, we are up to 1,951 people, so... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> be a small city. <laughs> So we're working on the Downtown. start of the tax sale process now. It's a process, but we've started, so. And you said that was December? Yeah, it looks well. It may be January now because um, I, Greta, we were emailing with Greta, and she said uh, because we do include utilities, either in with the taxes or alone. So we'll tax you if you're just for your water sewer, if your bill's too high. So she said because of that, statutorily it ends adds another layer. So it may be January, but <clears throat> the first letter notices are headed out the door um, from Stitzel Page and Fletcher pretty soon to let okay. everybody know who's, you know. Sometimes we send just the first letter, 
that because we've been sending letters and people have been maybe ignoring you, send them. And then once the first letters go out, then DTRU will make copies of those and send them to everybody who has a mortgage. They'll go to the mortgage company or the bank. Mm -hmm. And that usually puts a little, you know, they can work something out. It's better, we're not a bank. It's better if people yeah. work it out with their mortgage right. company or, you know, some other way. It's going to be cheaper for them in the long run. Do you so, know off the top of your head how many went out? I can't remember, honestly. They're... Not as many as when we did it a couple of years ago, that's for sure. I think Dietri and I had, we kind of called the list, but actually I don't know because we didn't, add, I didn't, uh, we did them separately, her and I. One day we did, mm -hmm. went through the total tax list and then one day we went through the utilities. But I, you know, my guess would be that I don't even think 20 went out. Yeah. And, um, but I'll have, a, I can look, I have a better number for you. No, and like I said, some of them we just send as a first letter because they're not enough money. They're enough money to kind of send them from a lawyer so they know we are serious, but maybe not necessarily to go all the way. Mm -hmm. Now, with the delinquent sewer and water utility bills, is there still opportunities through the COVID money for there residents has, to take if there, part in that? Or? There was, and it was if they're tenants. That was kind of the, there was for a while, and we received over $16,000 through the original first round. Um, then there was another, there's another um, set out there right now. There is some COVID money for tenants. So if you, but that's not the case for us. And, um, but there was still, I noticed a page there for some landlords, but we've been putting the information out. We've mailed it out. We've mm -hmm. sent it out. So whether or not someone actually qualifies right now, I don't know. But we sure. also, we send them to other places, Capstone, anyone else who mm -hmm. may have received money that they could qualify for in a different way. But the VRAP situation, we did have a lady who didn't qualify for water, but she mm -hmm. got a reduced electricity rate. So right now you can get reduced electric rates, you can get reduced uh, Wi-Fi internet connection rates. So if you go to the public service uh, page, there's opportunities for multiple things for savings. But what they're, the package is right now, I know I have one lady who's applied and she's waiting for the state to get to her application and she's an owner. So there's definitely something out there. Mm -hmm. I just don't know what the current- But there wasn't anything out there on tax relief. It was just no. on water, it, sewer. Yep, water, sewer, broadband, Utility. um, utilities. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, um, but we've certainly been putting that information out there. And there's been nice someone, also other towns have been doing it on Front Porch Forum as well. So, um, and they've been advertising it. I thought I saw something from Kurt White, an update about there was, the yeah. program. Yep, there is. The yeah, but I so far have one lady that I'm working with that mm -hmm. she's waiting. I keep looking at my queue and her application isn't there. So I'm just waiting. And she just said, I emailed her and said, look, I haven't seen anything. She said, yeah, they said it was going to take a while. So, mm -hmm. um, but I did have another lady reach out and she did get a reduced electric rate. So. There's definitely still assistance out there. Um, people can call the office, go on the website, whatever. There's definitely okay. places to find it. Did we do the actual vote on that or did we just make the motion? I think you just made the motion. And discussed it. Yeah. Yeah, you, didn't, you made the motion, but you didn't vote on your stencil page, Fletcher. And who's going to vote? Dave made the motion, Lindley seconded it, but they haven't voted it yet for the oh, designation okay. of Stitzel, Page, and Fletcher. Oh, good. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 And then the updated scope of services for a single audit. So you signed one already, um, but at the time we weren't, we didn't, weren't sure if we needed a single audit, and we mm -hmm. do. Need a single audit, so um, mainly due to the DWSRF expenses. And I have spoke to Wayne Elliott. I wrote to him, and he's we're checking in with the state to see if some or all of that may be covered in our loan program because they had budgeted. Uh, there was budgeted for um, some expenses that we're not going to use, so we may be able to get some or all of that covered through that. And no, it doesn't matter that they called you a city council. And I don't think they, I think that's pretty boilerplate language. It is boilerplate. Yeah. Sure yeah, but they were here this last week. They were here uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, they didn't finish the transfer station audit. Um, 
but so for every, Rick was happy. He thought everything looked good, and um, he is supposed to send me an email the list of like trial balance changes. We had some work on the depreciation schedule and um, tax schedule, but I received one email today from one of the from Faith. I have to send her something. Then he's going to give a list for the transfer station of of. Um, Deposits he wants Jen to pull that sample for him, and then that'll be at the office. He'll come down one day, finish up the transfer station, go down there, set up a time to go see Jen and walk through the place. So, and the transfer station is the transfer station is new. Yes. Yeah. Yep, they pay for it. Yep, and this will be the last audit that Sullivan and Powers does for the transfer station. Um, they've been unhappy with the price. Sullivan and Powers says, fine, find a different auditor, we'll let you out of the contract. So I had sent an email to Jerry telling him you better get your RFP out because you need to find a new author. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll see if it saves them some money. Okay. okay. All right. So here's the, this is the signature page. Move we accept it. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Teresa, just for curiosity's sake. We all have to sign this. With yep. BRTS, using a different auditor, does that change any sort of work on your end, or is it all the same? I think it'll be, I, uh, I think it'll be the same. I mean, they'll come in and, you know, they'll pull a sampling of AP and all that. I can't imagine it's going to yeah. be any, mm -hmm. any different, right? I mean, it, it's just going to be another layer, probably, yes, because right now, Sullivan and Powers, when they pull a sample, they'll pull water, sewer, transfer station, AP. So this will be a second. Um, you know, layer, but yeah. it'll be all right. They'll tie out with Sullivan and Powers numbers, so I'm not yeah. too worried about it. It'll be all right. Um, I don't, honestly, it depends who you get. I don't know. Right. I mean, and what they ask for. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I do not know. Again, it sounds, you know, kind of elementary that we're, you know, talking about single audits and things like this, but there was a time in this town where. Thank you. We were way behind on audits. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the single audit so is because like, if you spend over, you know, seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, then you have to do a single. And we had so our single is made up of FEMA expenses, but the DWSRF is what's pushing us over the top. Yeah. So um, Rick and I had worked on that. So we were we had thought we would need one last year, and then we didn't end up needing it because some of the information we received from the state was incorrect about how much of our um, DWSRF was federal money. So once we got an update from them, then we were able to drop what we, you know, you only have to do the federal portions. So relieved us from having one, but he's like, not this year. <laughs> so I've actually never been through a single audit. So we'll see what, I'm not sure what, what the extra layer is, but I'm sure it's nothing fun, but <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Usually with anything to do with audit. Yeah, well, you know, it should be. All right, anything further on that? All right, we have the FY22 municipal resolution for bylaw modernization. So we had given you this resolution in your packet. I gotta get Rick Benson will sign it at our October planning commission meeting. I actually have a meeting at 9 a.m. tomorrow with um, Tory and uh, another town. One, two of us couldn't, I had the audit, so two of towns couldn't do it the last time they had a meeting, but. I gave you the deadline, the um, information on the modernization grant that the um, Two Rivers had put together, which was pretty much all of our understanding about it. These are a lot of the changes that we had talked about at the Planning Commission. Mm -hmm. um, so we obviously picked up some low-hanging fruit for um, our bylaw updates just to make it more consistent for the DRB and, and Kelly and I to enforce zoning. So this is nice. We're looking forward to this. And the Planning Commission started um, at our meeting, looking at talking about increasing some density in areas, maybe how we were going to do that. Were we mm -hmm. going to change the zoning from four acre to two acre? You know, how we're we going to do it in what areas? So we did receive maps from Two Rivers. Uh, Sarah was kind enough to make us copies, and we got um, Spalding Press to laminate them so that we can write on them. And Rick came in, and he's going doing great things. He's got the aerial photos and the topography. So he's gonna try to like look through them and try to outline for us where can you, where you're not in the river corridor, where you're not in the flood zone, where it's not already in a conservation easement. Yeah, which we don't have a sixty percent 
<laughs> right, exactly. And, and so he talked about that. So I think he's going to sign on to the meeting tomorrow morning as well, um, which will be nice. So and that's just 10% match. I, yeah, yep, yep. So, um, and it was nice too. They were doing a consortium of towns, which was great. So they were trying to, you know, we're all looking, doing similar things. So that'll be nice. Um, but it's good. You know, I had agreed, uh, promised them that we would, we'd do the agenda. We'd obviously take our minutes. And I think last time, you know, Two Rivers ended up really having to do a lot, um, more than they maybe had bargained for. So we said we would, we would do better. So. But anyway, so it'll be interesting to go through the process. So this is your resolution, and it looks like there's just a motion um, for Chris to sign. Please include me on the meeting, meeting notes later. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Sure. For the planning commission. Yep. Sure. Absolutely. So we'll just have to budget that six thousand dollars in this coming yep. budget, or mm -hmm. or is it something we have to find in the current budget? Right? Well, we may have to find some of it now and some of it later. And I think we have, I want to say there's 15 or $102,000 in there for planning already. I can't remember what's in there. There's something in the budget. Yeah, but we'll have yeah, to. Yeah, I just didn't know how they. Come. Well, it's, you know. It depends on. Yeah, the, we'd rather come up with a 10% than the whole 100%. <laughs> so we'll figure out what we need to do. But it depends when they start, once the grants get approved. We may have to come up with some money now and, and some in our next budget. But we'll see. I'll know better tomorrow after I meet with um, Tori. Okay. All right. So we just need a motion. For uh, that the legislative body recommends applying for the grant. So you would be the signer. So it's just a motion for, my, for the chair to sign yep. on behalf. Mm -hmm. Okay. So move. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Thank you. And town manager report. So, okay, so the state's emergency manager, we talked about ICS 402, and I talked to Rich, and he currently um, doesn't have any classes scheduled, but he said, you know, either him or somebody for the training could do it, but what he said, it's a four-hour in-person or virtual session, so I don't know how you guys want to do that. I don't, I'm assuming you do not want to do it, you know, obviously you don't want to do it at six o'clock at night. I don't know if you want to do it a Saturday, if you want to do it someday at noon. I'm not really sure how you guys want to do this, but it's, if, but it's a four hour. 6 a.m. No, 6 a.m. Does this have to be conducted as the entire board or can we do it individually or? Well, I don't think so. Well, currently it doesn't have any schedule, so no, we'd be scheduling so, it just for us. Okay. Yeah. So we'd have and to it, pick and we don't have to do it tomorrow them. either. It's just... Um, does, does Dave Aldergetti have folks that need the training as well? Like, are there sort of a bigger pool of people that need yeah, it? Yeah, not, not 402. 402 yeah. is pretty much for select boards. Just, okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I would take it, but that's pretty much, it's for select boards and uh, governing bodies, town managers. So it's not, yeah, they'd be looking at... ICS 200, 300, 400, but not this one. So, um, but it's not, you know, I'm not really sure what you guys want to do. If you want to wait, maybe you want to do it this winter um, when things slow down for people. Yeah. I mean, I'd be fine, like Dave said, I mean, uh, maybe not 6 a.m., but I'd be yeah, fine with the weekend day in the morning, yeah. you know, do an 8 a.m. start and yeah. be done by noon. I would just assume it'd be another at least two months yeah. yeah, I would agree. Winter. Right. Yeah. So well, at we this can... point, is it something that we should do before the March? No, no. Time I mean, frame this is or just... after the March time frame? I mean, if it's just you something. Take it and there's yeah. Two new board members, then right. You know, mm. that's true. It's just else. something that you sh should do as as a board. It's handy training. Sometimes they offer it like, mm -hmm. oh, they haven't yet. Maybe we'll see one coming out. So if I email Rich back and say, hey. We're interested if sometimes if they offer it at a um, regional planning, so one or two of you could go at a time. Right. But since he doesn't yeah. have any scheduled right now, mm -hmm. so what I could do is send him an email and say, "Hey, you know what? We've got some interest here. Um, are you planning on scheduling it over the winter? Right. And if he is, and you know, in any areas, Randolph, wherever, then we could put it out and people could go, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and take it. I've taken classes at 
you know, at Addison County Regional Planning or at the high school. So sometimes they're just staging it, but so we could just, I could send him an email and see if he's going to be scheduling it because you can either, he'll do one just special for you mm-hmm. or he'll, um, mm-hmm. you can try to pick it up elsewhere. So let me see if there's other options out so there. Is there a 100? <laughs> there is, there's an ICS 100. And um, you can do that on your own online, and you would print out prints out a certificate um, for you. It's just basic incident command, how it works, what it means, and you can certainly take that on your own um, anytime. Okay. Do you send me that? I can try to. Yeah, I'll have to um, look for one. Yeah, and I can send that to all the select board. But I think some of you've taken it. Yeah. You've taken it, Lindley. Who no, took it with you? I don't think I did. Ellie. Uh-huh. <laughs> I took the train. <laughs> okay. It was mostly fire. fire okay, well, yeah, and that's a few community members. I think I was the only select board member yeah. on there. Okay. I did, I did the Red Cross one for the. All right, so I can send out the ICS 100 board. link and at least to the select board. That would at least give you all, and you can take that on your own, and that's probably. I'm trying to remember. It's been a few, it a few years since I took it. I think it only took me like an hour online, yeah, two hours. It wasn't very long. So ICS monitor. So I'll send that link out, and then I'll send a note to Rich and ask him if he's going to be scheduling any in this area cool. in the next few months. I know after Thanksgiving is when work dies down for myself. And Dave needs a couple more months. Okay. Yeah, usually after. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, let's see what he's got, and we'll send out the ICS. Thanksgiving and the end of March is usually okay. easier for me. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I think I'd prefer March, after the year. Busy. All right, so maybe January. Yeah, January. Something in January. Yeah. Yeah. So I had emailed with Garrett Baxter, um, one of the attorneys at VLCT, regarding the updated cannabis regulations. So, so he he was great. Um, So S25 had amended the original act, and he said, so cannabis operations will not be allowed in Bethel until the residents vote yes Mm -hmm. on Australian ballot because the original act had said if we didn't vote by 2023, it would be automatically you're opting in. So they removed that. So now there's no rush to vote and no one can open a business until you vote and yes, it has to be Australian ballot. Mm -hmm. So- um, And then if you do vote it in, but at a later time voted out, and anybody that has yes, opened a suspensory That's becomes grandfather clause. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I like that paragraph. Yeah, mm-hmm. I saw, uh, saw that. Yeah. Right yeah. Go, it turns into a shit show here in town. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The guy can just keep right on voting. Yeah. Yep. But I guess exactly. the whole thing is we haven't had anybody to date. I have not had a request yet. Interested in doing anything locally, right? No, no, no I have not had a request. Or... So I guess at this point, is it, did we just... You could just wait. You not have, have to worry about doing it unless it's petitioned and then... Exactly. And then That's what could, you could wait for. But then it becomes a two-year process, though. You have to put it on the Right. Morning. If somebody... Right. right. If someone... Well, unless if unless know, somebody puts a petition for this coming meeting here in March. Right. Then they'd get on this meeting in March and you right. voted at this meeting in March. Right. But if nobody petitions it, then... Yeah. And basically, you don't ever have to vote it until someone petitions it. You could right. just say, when someone's interested, they'll do something about it. Mm-hmm. So that definitely, um, but and it, it has to be Australian ballot. So. Um, but that would mean that if a person came in uh, March 10th and wanted to start a business, they'd have to wait a year. Yep. Or have a special meet. meeting. They well, yeah, or have a special, special meeting. meeting. So you'd have to, they'd have to petition it, um, they, or, or they'd have to come to the select board and explain, and then the select board could say at that point that they don't have to pass a petition. The select board could choose to warn a separate um, vote, just like you would a bond vote that wasn't at, um, at town meeting. Right. So, I, just, I, hmm. I just, if, I don't want to put somebody off for a year if they, you just have to do a special meeting. So you would pay to have the ballot, you know, a ballot printed, you do, you know, all that sort of stuff. You'd warn a, it would just be an election at a different time. So they wouldn't necessarily have to wait a year. And someone could come and the select board could say, hmm, petition it. You know, you have to do a petition and then, you know, it could take longer. So it really depends. I would assume it depends on what the person's plan is and how you felt about it. And, 
mm -hmm. you know, all that sort of information. But it's just easier to do it at town meeting because you can just add the line item mm -hmm. rather than special cost for printing and you know exactly. ballot and all that. Yeah, because if you well, were gonna the cost, it, it has to be. It has yeah, to be. it has to be. Yeah. So what would cost you if you did it separately? We'd photocopy the ballots. We'd photocopy the you know the cost would be advertising basically advertising the vote and because um, you have to put it in the paper and <laughs> staffing the election that sort of I, thing. I know on the western side of the state the route seven corridor there's you know there's a lot of different um things going on um with the industry on that side of the state i haven't seen too much in and around this area um, has randolph passed it, randolph passed it right. and and but is there anything in randolph not that not that not that yeah. but randolph did pass it and couple other towns locally, but mm -hmm. I can't remember who else was on the list. I mean, maybe it was Barry. But um, so it does allow you options, even if you don't put it on this town meeting morning. Someone does not have to wait a year. They would have to wait for you guys to do a special election, however. So I mean, that would be one question. The other is there is no, quote, harm in letting the people decide now either. No, you do whatever you do whatever you guys want as a majority of the board. So you can decide that when we start um, preparing for the, the warning. Um, or I mean, you can certainly talk about it tonight. And, and I don't know what you want to do, what your feeling is, but we can add it to the warning. Well, maybe one of the board meetings in November. You're gonna could have be to specifically decide. on what we're going to put on the warning. Yeah. Well, yeah. And we we'll could advertise it as. You know mm -hmm. what we are putting on the warning and we'll give others the opportunity if they do want that on the warning to come to the select board and yeah so we can put ask us at that agenda. point you know yeah. i think it'd be interesting to put it out in a way where people have some advance notice that it's mm -hmm. a discussion that would be happening here because right. it, it sort of begs the question just because we haven't heard does it mean no one's thinking about it or are there people thinking about it who just haven't understood the the nuance of the law yet mm -hmm. You know, but are interested in a retail business of some sort somewhere in Bethel and right. would want to pursue it. They just haven't, you know, had that discussion yet. Is it the end of December or end of January that we have to have the warning? Just end of December. We'll December. sign everything. Yeah, okay. yeah because you mm -hmm. have to get there's a I can't picture the it's date on the calendar period. right now. But by like the time you have to go to print and all that stuff. Yeah, it's nice yeah. to have the whole thing put to bed by the end okay. of December. So if we put it on the agenda for November that we're gonna be discussing it, mm -hmm. that's what you want to do. Okay. Put on agenda for like November. Yep. Discussing yeah. cannabis. We probably ought to in Sometime in October, do a front page forum kind of thing. Um, we're planning items to put on the morning for whatever November meeting. And that might include the, the cannabis, and that could also include the Australian versus in person meeting right. uh, mm -hmm. discussion. Maybe you want to have those on separate nights. <laughs> Depending on if I don't know, uh, Doug. You want to have two two of them, or? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it might no, be I think the that's last, a good idea. Maybe we'll do it that you know, yeah, either that last yeah. one in October, beginning in November. So October post on front forum date of. So would you be able to have a sample of what our warning would look like at that point, and then we could just say that these are whatever. If there's one or two or three others that the board is thinking about doing, then it allows. Well, everybody the opportunity to speak for it or against it or yeah, you know, sure. I mean I will have on set on numbers in for the budget, but I can I mean the rest of it will pretty much look the same as it did last year. Well, I think year. It, you know just like we talked yeah. about you know the you know electing a moderator and a treasurer and a you know yeah town right. clerk and the the board seats and the like board meeting. In. I mean we could just put the. Late October. Yeah, you know, the budget, but doesn't necessarily have to have the dollar figure. Yeah, it would. Yeah, that. right. Obviously, yeah, it would be, done. be the first time folks know about two potential openings on the board. <coughs> yeah. Also, so I'll kind of get that out. In the open okay. Thing. So October post and front porch date of select board meeting in late October, early November, to discuss Australian ballot votes on um, as select mm -hmm. board members. Or uh, public officials or whatever mm -hmm. on um, public officials yeah. Yeah. and 
budget and canvas. Yeah, so we'll do a sample warning. Okay. And that's first. Yeah, we'll have to pretty much have it standard. So yeah, it'll just look a little different because. So how do you want to do that? Because I guess we could do a couple sample warnings because if you one sample warning will be just voting. One sample ballot warning would be this is how we've always done it. One sample ballot would be this is what it's going to look like if you vote Australian ballot for just your officers. And one sample warning of this is what it's going to look like if you vote all your budget items. I was I was just thinking that we just do the regular warning how uh -huh. it's always been, but then have um, some well, information on maybe a separate sheet of here or here. Or some other items that are being that's true because um, you wouldn't vote subjected this year. to be mm -hmm. on it as well because you wouldn't vote this year no. ballot. it would be whether or not to go to the future okay so if you just did up like the, the sure. normal warning and then maybe we had a do you have to have two questions a separate sheet of these are these are other items that the board mm -hmm. is considering i yeah. guess mm -hmm. and and we could lay, you know, I don't know, maybe there's more than just two of them that we could well, put right on there. Well, right now there's two, cannabis and Australian ballot, so. Okay, all right, yeah, that's yeah, right. I'm, well, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, for off. instance, let's say we decided to um, put the um, communication equipment. Oh, right. And we did that as a, you know, here's another one that we're considering. So yeah. it allows people to weigh into it, you know. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, well, maybe I'll try to kick that out for October, and then we can see what it looks like, and then mm -hmm. do it in the November. I, so I'll do a sample in October. That's right, because I forgot we wouldn't vote this year. So right. You, so you're saying you'd have a sample for us to see in October, but we'd have the meeting that's more the big, bigger public discussion in, in November. November. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that way we can see if there's more we're missing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah, that's fine. I can. Do yeah, that. I'm not sure how much detail it needs. Well, it's just a sample warning. It's yeah. pretty straightforward. I mean, I have the same one we did last we have year. To so deal we deal with the We just add two more questions to it. Basically, yeah. one is, are you going to go Australian ballot and cannabis? And then if you decide about your equipment or whatever, so you might have two or three extras on there, but that's fine. We can do that. That's, okay. That's fine. Let's see what else I have on here. Um, the other thing was, I was going to know that we, I just found out today that they will be um, painting tomorrow for Main Street, doing um, crosswalks and parking and stuff. Tatro, first they couldn't get the paint, they're not alone, that was, <laughs> then all of a sudden the contractor was like, I have an opening tomorrow. So I'm like, perfect, it'll be all done right before Forward Fest. So that'll be great, so they're coming in tomorrow. Um, I just signed off on the paperwork tonight, so phase two of our water project, which is, you know, Graham, uh, Highland, etc. that's off to the state for environmental review. Last time we got there, took five months, six months, so hopefully not so long this time, but I signed off on that tonight. Um, so the other thing that um, we talked about was, oh, Bethel for All. I gave you, I think I forwarded you all the email, plus I gave you the hard copy. So there's ways if you can't attend those meetings, what I like about what Nicole and and Rebecca are doing is that there's these quick polls. So even if you can't attend the meeting, you can still get your opinion out there. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really nice. I like the way that she's doing that. Um, so and do we need to formulate a response to her request as far as how, how they want to interface with the mm -hmm. select board? Yeah, we had talked about, um, I had told her she could, you know, basically continue to pass stuff on I'd make sure it went into your packet and then yes I think she asked you a specific question about about it let's see Maybe. well she wanted to she gave us some different options for for getting involved individually or as a group right and um, that's right and I think she was looking for you guys to reply directly right I, was gonna mean, I mean individually Okay. At least that was the way I read it. You read it differently, well, Paul? Well, the second part of it had to do with the select board as a whole. Yeah, as oh, here we think go. about how you want to engage in and support this project, right. let me know which of the options below or others you'd like to pursue. Yeah. And then they would have somebody come to our meetings or they would just work through you. Or, right, and you know, I had told her that I thought it would be nice that, yes, we do updates in the select board packets, and I told her I thought it would be nice if you guys had someone at once a month here at a select board meeting to update you to answer any of your questions right. directly. Right. Probably, I mean, that's normally yeah. the yeah. best way. Yeah. 
things work is to have someone represent them to come to the board and talk about yeah, the what other, they have going on, what they need help with. or Yeah, the other thing is she wanted to know if one of you would rotate to attend their meetings. And um, I already attend this. I'm on the steering committee, so I attend the steering committee meetings. And um, I told her I thought during our meeting that it would be easier for you guys, for obviously one of them to come to you once a month, to update you via packet, and then mm -hmm. if you signed up via email, you could also get regular updates. I don't know if one of you... But it depends guys, on when they have their meetings and everything, too. I don't think they have a schedule made up yet. It we don't. Be, no, not at the steering they, committee meetings. It might work out that somebody could go just, you know, but I wouldn't want to lock into it. Yeah, and, and right now, um, <clears throat> even, yeah, she's either saying each meeting or a major community event, because right now the only thing I have agreed to is the steering committee. Because they have these other pop out or breakout committees, and I said I just I can't. I, I don't have between the select board meetings, planning commission, and that I don't have time for that. So, I think that's what I liked about the emails and you guys signing up is you could say, oh, I can volunteer for that one meeting, and they're trying to right. come up with some options where you just sometimes volunteer to, at a one event, which is really nice. Instead of you being you know tied up to go oh every Tuesday for the next yeah. six months, you've got yeah. to do something, but. So what do you think? Is that what you guys want to see? Is someone coming here once a month and regular updates to your packet? Mm -hmm. Yep. <clears throat> Sounds good to me. And then we'll see how the select board can. And just you know, have to make sure that we're on the email chain. Yep. From them. All right, we'll make sure. And I would be willing to regularly attend. OK, email chain. Um, and you would be willing to attend the steering committee meeting, minute, meetings on a regular basis or the other, or one of the breakout committees? Steering committee at this point. Okay. Please, I'm not finding, um, A separate email with that link for the sign up. Okay. I, I think I'm already on their list. I'm just realizing I don't think I saw it as an email. Okay. There's a click here to sign up in the. <laughs> There's, say that again. There's a thing that says click here to sign up. Yeah, I thought that you got the email as well. So right. I will resend, or I'll go back. I thought I'd sent it. Maybe I printed it out and didn't send it to you. So I will, I'll send it to you. So I'll send out. So, send out Nicole's sign up. I'm pretty sure I did, but I'll, I'll go back. Well, and I just I just looked back through my email, but I'm not finding it. Okay, because I yeah, we'll send it out, and I don't know if she sent it or if I forwarded it, but I'll um, send out Nicole's sign up email, and then um, that way you guys can sign up directly for what you want, because they had a neat little. You know, set up there. I thought it was good. Um, let's see. What else do we have? So I guess that's it for town manager's report, Chris. I have something else for the other communications. If you want me to just do that now. Sure. All right. So the other one is the phase. One water project, kind of a list of pros and cons that Tim and I sat down and put together. And um, so I wasn't sure if anybody had any questions on this. We thought it would be, um, had talked to Chris Jarvis and, you know, tried to go back and look at the project as a whole and see what did we gain, what, you know, what wasn't perfect, what didn't go as well. I mean, I put, you know, traffic delays, their standard for construction, but that was obviously, I didn't think I wasn't too, too bad. Dust was an issue in 2020, 2021, but it was super dry. Dig a hole. I mean, we tried, we, we did talk to them about watering and chloride, and that certainly was an issue, but kind of um, the next section that we did is something that we talked to Aldrich and Ellie about and said, you know, we have to have full lane pave for Graham, for Highland, for um, Sand Hill. So the next phase, you know. 
So, Therese, when do we get a final uh, hashing out of the financial side of this with the grants and the... So, we've got, I've given you guys something in your packet. I can give you the updated, or the numbers are the numbers. I think I gave them to you mm -hmm. a while ago, but and they haven't really changed much. Right now, what we have done is complained heavily to the state and said, you know, frankly, we think you host us. There's $500,000 in lead that we didn't get, subsidy that we didn't get, that we want. We know you got inundated with COVID money. Um, it's also not our fault that, that environmental engineering took months, so we didn't get the full 25% subsidy that we think we were entitled to. So we have done that. Alderton Elliott, uh, Wayne has gone to the new guy. Of course, a bunch of people have left now in the water and, and a new gentleman came in and took over. Wayne already has met with a guy and said, and the gentleman said, yeah, you're not alone. There's other towns out there that feel that way. So we're hoping that as this COVID money comes in, that the state, that they may end up doing something more here. But Where did the money go that was promised to us? Why are they need new, new money? Mm, this right. is me <laughs> Yeah, exactly. You yeah. said you could have this money yeah. and it's allocated, but now we got COVID money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, the two people that came to the meeting are no longer with the state. And um, in the end, they all basically, it looks like a lot of the money had, that was set aside had gone to, you know, Bennington. And they had a huge lead problem. We'll say that. Bennington had a, had a really big problem. And, um, but they, um, so you know how it was. It wasn't, it was implied and then that we would get it. And then, of course, when it all sugared out, they were like, oh, no. And we didn't even realize because we were talking, and even the lady who was overseeing our project for the state, every meeting we talked about this, we traced it, with, then we're all like, what, what, you know, when did somebody know this and we didn't? Um, so we're still fighting for it, but we know what the bottom line looks like now. Um, and hopefully we're gonna get more money. I mean, we, they'd given us an additional 66,000 that out of, um, you know, that was left over that wasn't allocated from the prior year, but they know we still want more money. So we have a year um, for the warranty period and before, um, you know, our loan payments are due. So we're just hoping, I can tell you certainly where we can give you the information where we stand right now, but I'm still hoping that in a year, within the next year that changes and that we end up seeing more subsidy. So, um, yeah. So that's where we stand now. But I can make a note, Paul, to put update you in the next packet, put the financials. Do we have documentation on the actual gallons per day savings we're doing? Or Not yet. And um, you can see we put that down here on, well, I think I didn't. Well, no, I don't yet. We're kind of, well, <laughs> you know what happened, Dave. It's exactly what we said was going to happen. So you see some savings, and then all of a sudden, because we fixed a lot of the lines and we increased pressure and you have a high pressure system, we've got leaks on other streets now because we repaired this, put more pressure, so we've blown out in a couple areas already. Mm -hmm. So um, we are hoping to, we just wanna track it over the next few months to a year and see you know, where we came out. We saw immediate savings. And then, you know, in, in gallons pumping, and then you see it creep up and you find another leak. And then we sprung another leak over on North Main Street. So it's coming out on somebody's lawn. And, um, and we knew that was gonna happen because you have such pressure. But, um, so we are tracking it. And um, so, and we'll have better numbers once we've done it for a little while. So there's still a small punch list left. Um, obviously line striping was part of that and um, a few other things, so they're slowly, you know, picking their way off the list. Pros definitely outweigh the cons. Yeah, I mean, By you know, it, and it should, you know, I mean, you did a huge investment in the infrastructure. Yes, there was traffic delays. Yes, there well, the was dust. The big one stuck out for me was the stu uh, we talked about it before they even started, that why the hell can't we get this stormwater collection system done when the hole is open? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it makes too much sense. And we ended up, well, we were lucky because you guys had agreed to budget $15,000 for us to engineer one. And then basically we just put it in on the fly and spent that 15000 for engineering and did it there. So um, you guys made some smart choices when you were budgeting. And um, yeah, and of course the pros are going to outweigh the cons. Yes, there was inconvenience. Yes. We had to do scheduled, you know, shutoffs. Yes, you know, they hit a couple things, broke a sewer line, broke a what? 
all pretty standard, you know? I mean, it's a construction project. Right. So um, the good news is we're off from Main Street and... Um, and these type of projects end up being the more invasive projects that you're gonna have as a town because, yeah. because of all the, you know, what's in the road and what the unknowns are and, right. you know, almost every water line, sewer line is under a sidewalk or somewhere, so you have exactly. to dig up, you know, lots of stuff to get to it. It's not like, yeah. whatever, paving or graveling or something where it's simple. Yeah, and, and you that. know, the next street's Graham Street. That'll be, you know, it's gonna inconvenience those residents. Uh, Highland, the Sand Hill will be nice. But, um, but you know, it, it also gives people bigger, it's not, you're not digging up Main Street. But over the last couple of years, before mm -hmm. the project, I mean, we had two significant leaks yeah. on oh, these. Yeah. You know, we had the one out in front of Mascoma that was a pretty big leak. We had the one that kept rearing its head over here yep, by, by Genesis and around that. Yeah, and Bethel then we Mills had the other and, one by Richardson Store. Yeah, so um, I mean, the it, one in front of the town yeah. office. But I think the one in Mascoma that was a pretty large leak, yeah. if I remember right. Yeah. 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 Um, so I mean, I, I got you know, we can't quantify the savings at this point, but I got to think it's pretty significant. Yeah, I mean, not I, to mention manpower to. I mean, how many right. times did you see him on a? Sunday morning fixing, you know, a leak Something out in front of somebody's can, house. And yeah. It's also hard, too, because as much as, you know, it's a big, it was a big price tag, it was, you know, a big project, and, and so, yeah, you see some immediate savings, and then the system still is old. The system still is in disrepair. So it, because we fixed up here, we've gained some, but then, you know, we knew we were going to blow it. We knew we were leaking at the pool um, this year, and we're trying. That was where we got... We've kind of we're just letting it go and it drained to a certain point so now we knew we lost at the pool quite a significant amount of water um, and now like I said we know it's blown out on somebody's lawn in North Maine and, and you know the other ones we haven't seen yet so um, but yeah you could definitely see well, there there'll be another leak out. detection thing going on there was, I don't know year. if there will, they put out for it, and I don't know what year it was, Tim and I were talking about it, because I know he and Aaron and Richard were out last week doing some more leak detect, or line locating for um, the next phase, so I don't know when the leak detection program comes around, I'm not sure if it's annually or every, I think it's every other year, yeah. usually, or something because like I think that, we did but. it. We did it. Uh, I think the year we did before. it right before the project yeah. here. And um, and the thing is too, is even now if we did it um, in those, we wouldn't do those areas anyways because right. that's our next phase. Well, that might be good. Yeah. You know, to, to get the arteries off of it now yeah. to see. Because then that's the way it's going to go. We'll do phase two, sprung. and then we'll do phase three, and we'll you know start going. Well, we also you know we had the about it. we had the hydrants that were not working that are operational now yep. on this line. There was two of them, I mm -hmm. think, that were uh, there was, we did, at that point. Yeah, and we replaced them, and then um, we did two more on River Street. And so it's a, you know, it's an ongoing process, but yeah, I mean, there are definitely more pros than cons, for sure. And, and uh, the most common was and traffic delay. Dust was a huge problem. We got a ton of phone calls about dust the first, yeah. first phase. Um, not so bad this year. But, well, like uh, last year when they were doing the work, I mean, it was such a dry summer, you know, brutal. where it this was year was complete opposite, where yeah. probably if you did a line share of it this year, you probably wouldn't have the dust complaints because yeah. it rained almost every day. You know? Yeah, it was it was so. brutal the first year, and um, and it was tough, you know, we were just telling people, go dig a hole in your front yard, you know, because it's dusty, I don't, you know, and if you went down when they were digging, it was, it was deep, and it was dusty all the way, you know, that's why we were in a drought, but... So anyway, so that's the updated list. I had talked to Chris about that, so. I appreciate all the um, excess dirt and dust cleanup that happened in the last few weeks in downtown. Well, I think I that mean, a major work. Stevie, yeah. And yeah, Stevie yeah. has done a nice job. He it, went out yeah, and- Yeah, it was great to get that. Last weekend, cleaning. I think he was out pretty- Yeah, yeah, he was great. And I know really Brad had noted um, when I reached out to just send out an email as a whole to about doing you know them organizing and doing the cleanup of town wide he said he had a gas powered pressure washer that he would let people use but i don't know if he got any takers on that i don't know but he did offer so if if business owners or building owners not as the business owners but building owners if they wanted to um anywhere along it kind of sounded like he was willing to let people use it which was which was nice so but like i said i don't know if he had any takers or not all right, so we'll let Nicole know about that. Um, 
Then the other thing was so we did receive our um, portion of our county money. So, so far we have received $291,602.34. So we received our state share of 102,000 and our county share of 189,000. We'll get our next um, shot of that next year. So that would be on our next agenda that we'll talk about how we're gonna spend the American Rescue Plan money. Um, we're gonna sit down, uh, Tim and I, and he's getting some pricing right now on sewer pumps. Um, he has talked to Aldrich and Elliot about um, what we should switch to, about, uh, you know, best manufacturers for those. I think they gave him a couple of options. Um, seeing what else we need to do. I know we need to do some work on at least one of the tanks, uh, one of the pump houses. It would be nice to take this money and use it for infrastructure so we don't have to borrow. So because the water and sewer system are a closed system, you know, we can't really currently add any users. It would be nice if we could use the American Rescue Plan money to pay for 30 plus year improvements that won't get tagged into, into a loan. Because if we don't use this money, we will be buying sewer pumps, we'll be buying a new generator, we'll be um, paying to fix the one of the reservoirs, we'll be paying to update one of the well houses because the water, we just had our sanitary survey, so we haven't received the results yet, um, which should be hopefully from uh, war and peace down to just peace. So it's <laughs> because of the $2.8 million project that took some stuff on, but it also added some stuff because of the age of the system. So we're getting pricing now, and um, I talked to Tim and said, look, we need to sit down, do a spreadsheet, go to the select board and say, look, here's the money. This is our recommendation on what we spent, it, and in order of triaging, what's gonna go first. And I know the sewer pumps alone, you're looking at, I would say 70,000 um, right there. And um, I think another generator is 10. Wow. Those pumps aren't that old. 30 years? Four of them, got, I believe, got replaced after Irene. I'm uh, down at the pump station, not the pumps that are in the, not the, not the, not the ones that, miles. right, yes, not those, sorry, I should have, yes. The ones down at the pump station itself, not the ones out here, because um, you're right, the one over by Marsh Meadow was replaced, and, but those down there, so, and, and Aldrich and Elliot is, been involved in just saying, look, <clears throat> some of the things that we need to, to look at for replacing. So it makes sense to, we've always talked about putting the money in infrastructure, water, sewer, makes sense. So Might what well. generator is needing to replace it? The one, we're looking at the one by, um, oh, Cross from Beth Mills? Yes, I'm thinking, yeah. Because Irene, we got a new one down in, yep. at that one, during right. Irene. Yeah, so it's not that one, it's the other. We have those on a regular scheduled maintenance plan? Yes, yep, with Yankee Generator. Yep, they do on the same time they do the school. So we pay for Yankee Generator to come do the school. So we do. So one time we were a little lax. Yeah, no, nope, we're regular. What? They come and uh, they come and do a regular. Um, we're on the same schedule now. So we kick out the school. And I know because I quote that bill. So um, so that's what we're looking at. So we'll come Will to we get you. some sort of cheat sheet at some point of what we can and cannot use that money for yes, parameters well, of exactly because there may be some other scopes of work throughout the town that we can take advantage yeah. of some of that money so too. right now i have like a 53 they gave you this 53 page document just on the reporting of the money i'm like grace and then there's another 58 pages from the national league of cities and towns they put out that's just 58 pages of frequently asked questions then the federal IRS finally put out their final rule. So I have a lot of pages to read before two weeks to come up with. And I basically took out all the other stuff. We're not doing COVID clinics. We're not doing, you know, some of the stuff I really am just focusing on strictly on infrastructure. And they pretty much have stuck with the original, which is sewer, water, and broadband. And we're not touching broadband because the governor's doing, you know, a bunch of initiatives there. You've already done EC fiber. And so we're really focusing on you know, sewer water. So right now, that money is no culverts, no, you know, you're, well, you know, you're out. And then we'll probably have to do a single audit for famous. whatever, because that's going to be over 500 <clears throat> Well, no, because, well, we won't spend it in the same year. Oh, so okay. no, because it's how much you spend in a year. And since we're getting the money in two shares, 
uh, we won't. And, um, and as you know, they haven't passed a transportation bill because you saw right. Representative Welch. So um, they're supposed to vote on it this week, I guess. We're here. Yeah. So um, so anyway, so that's where we land with that. So I have to do some reading and kind of narrow it down. To and oh, and Paul sent me a nice thing that uh, Sarah Rate had done mm. right from Two, yeah, Rivers. Two Rivers. So. I just got to sort through all that and then come to you with a spreadsheet that says, okay, this is triage, what we think, what our recommendation is for this year and our recommendation for next year. So that'll be coming. Um, That's it. The other thing uh, was uh, once you get to other communications is uh, Jean has your Vermont Climate Counselor's information in there. I got a comment on the Conservation Commission meetings. Okay. Minutes, sure. I don't believe I went to any planning yeah. grant for the B O R E C. Yeah, I was I was there. Yep. She's got Dave in her minute. Uh, I was say yep. Oh, I was, okay. So I was, you didn't know uh, you changed places? I was out there. So oh, Dave, Eddie. Yeah. Oh, okay. Instead yeah. of um. Oh, all right. I'm going to give her a call. <laughs> just, just send her an email. Have her correct her, her minutes. Oh yeah. Are you going to do that, or do you want me to? Oh, you can. Okay. Uh, correct. Email. CC minutes. That's right. You were away. Mm-hmm. Vacation. It's only five o'clock. <laughs> five o'clock somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would like to have a comment, make a comment or two about the uh, Vermont Climate Counselors uh, piece. That I signed that as an individual leader uh, from Bethel. Uh, that letter, uh, which is going to the Vermont Climate Council. The Vermont Climate Council is what was established by the Vermont State Legislature in response with its uh, very controversial uh, climate plan. Uh, They are currently receiving comment uh, as they develop the the plan that they will implement over the next few years. And so I think it is very appropriate that we think about how, whether, if uh, we want to provide comment uh, (coughs) from the perspective of the town uh, to that council as they develop the plan that will, I can't remember, but what reduce the carbon input by 80% over the next, you know, decade or two. Uh, it's a very significant uh, uh, state legislation, and now is the time to have some input. And so I'm suggesting that if uh, that you can, as an individual, you could sign on to that letter, or we might want to ask the Energy Committee or the Conservation Commission, either or both, to take a look at uh, whether or not uh, we there might be a, a response from the town of Bethel. Uh, that we might want to provide in terms of input. Uh, they're open in, the input is uh, open until October 15th. Um, I just think it's an opportunity for us to have a say that I think could be really uh, important long term. Um, so I just wanted to, to say that whether you agree with that particular letter or not is not my point. My point is they're inviting comment now as they're putting the thing together. Now's the time to, to say, uh, and it's going to be put together because it's, it's state law. Uh, so what's the... Uh, bullet point one. What's what's that? That's cross or I can't read. It's a just transition principles. Uh, okay. Yeah. I guess. That 
those principles are part of the plan. There's a subgroup of the Climate Council <coughs> that is putting together just climate principles. Uh, those principles are the the focus is to make sure that those are administered with concern for the poor, uh, those most least likely to be able to afford, you know, renovations or electric vehicles or, or whatever uh, that we, uh, an example uh, is that, uh, and it's not related to this particular plan directly. But an example is that uh, flood control and hydroelectric dams have traditionally been built upon Native American reservations where they have taken cities or towns and completely destroyed them in order to produce electricity or to control floods. The Seneca Dam in uh, western New York, east western New York that fed, went into Pennsylvania and the Monongahela River was a flood control dam for Pittsburgh uh, and the Ohio River. Uh, the Tennessee Valley Authority Dam was another one. There's a garrison dam in North Dakota that was uh, hydro uh, that would, took out significant portions of a major Indian reservation. That's where those many of those dams have been uh, targeted. And so the concern is that we not uh, engage in uh, in our efforts to convert or to get off of carbon-based fuel, that we don't disadvantage those who are already disadvantaged. That's what the just <clears throat> transition principles are, um, or what they're. So it almost sounds like, because you were earlier you were mentioning um, kind of putting this out to the Conservation Commission and the Energy Committee, but also including equity and inclusion. We could and include sort of equity. And, I'm, so, so my, yeah, I'm just saying we might want to ask those three committees if they want to provide us with some feedback or, or if they want, or we might want to ask them to provide, to respond as town committees. But we, I think it would be good, an opportunity for us to have our say now. You could also have the, um, you could ask them to the Energy Committee, Conservation Commission, um, Equity Inclusion was informed but at the time, but some of the members or the what people that became members were participating. You could ask them to respond, you know, based on the approved town plan too, because a lot of that, you know, Energy Committee and Conservation did a great amount of work, mm -hmm. um, you know, the town plan. So we could, do a couple things, which is Gina suggesting, which is one, we could reach out to equity, inclusion, conservation, and energy, and make them aware of this timeline and ask them to put in comments directly. Or you could ask them, because I'm trying to think, when's your next select board meeting? Do you know, Chris? October, what is the next select board meeting? Um, I'm trying to think, did you say the 15th that was due? The 15th is the deadline. Indigenous Peoples Day. The eleventh. Uh, the eleventh is our next board meeting. Yeah. So what would? So we could certainly send them an email and let them know that they're accepting it, and they could submit as a committee. Or do you want them to come to you as a town? I'm not sure what you want to do. <clears throat> How you would like to do that? Reading this, Gene, I see no place that I can go to to respond to anybody. Uh, There's no. Link, right. or no I under, phone I, number, no email, nothing. I, I understand. Uh, I had a cover letter that I had sent out with that to some folk in town. I can send that to you. Because I, I have some serious questions about some of the things they want to do. Because mm -hmm. they're, 
it, it all is very wonderful, but what, when you do that, you're going to do this, this, and this. And those are carbon-rich things that you're going to do to the earth. When you're saving $10, you're going to spend 100 so I, I got questions about well, that. Well, I, I understand, yes, there's, <clears throat> I'm recognizing, A, the controversy, I'm recognizing the uh, various viewpoints, um, but. Um, well, anyway, I, I just, yeah. I, I need to know, I would like to know whom I could send my questions to to say, okay, you want to do this, but what about? So you um, want to submit your own issues to the climate yeah, I, council? I, I mean, I don't own do it, but I have them. Well, I you can do it as your own. Just you can do it as you exactly. can always and do it as an Jean individual. Did. Jean did it as a resident of mm -hmm. Bethel, and you absolutely have yeah. that same right. I think if you the at the top of the page it says three fifty Vermont. Um, I think you can go to their website, and that would probably link. Okay, you to which is three fifty vt dot org. Or you could write a... That's this organization that drafted this mm -hmm. letter. You could write your own personal letter. You can write your own personal letter and... Mm -hmm. Just go down the street and walk on Kirk's store. Give me I, think, I think the thing that always frustrates me with, you know, the climate change um, agendas in Vermont since I was a little kid is, like, they're so quick to say, by, by the year, whatever, we're going to be at so many percent and then we get there and we're not even close. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like there's not enough thought put into it. Like, is it really re realistically a goal to get to there? Like, I know we want to, but like, I think the thing I always look at is, I think we all want to make things better, but right. is it really a goal, attainable goal to well, get to that level by that date? Because we gotta think the load on the system, and upgrading the infrastructure, I mean, the system's old, you know, oh, to the begin big, with. The big deal to you're, mm -hmm. the load on the system, the cost to like small well, one of, like one of the one of the realities yeah. on this particular piece of legislation is that if we do not reach the goals, it is uh, the state will be liable and open to suit yeah, for failing is. to meet the goals. And that doesn't guarantee we're going to meet them. I'm yeah. simply saying Again, that's what the, the Vermont Pl Climate Council is charged with putting together is a plan to meet those goals within that frame time uh, or the state will be liable uh, for failure. Now, and so now's the time to, to comment to the state uh, around uh, what what the concerns are. Okay. I think what would be neat for our town would be to mm -hmm. kind of see how, because I know a lot of times, you know, a lot of these are kind of boilerplate, you know, pieces in the pie, right? But how does that affect like our little town of Bethel, like, mm -hmm. like farming or, you know, like obviously we don't have like mass trans transportation in our town, so mm -hmm. like, so. So that piece of it doesn't well, but really we matter do. to us, but but simple things like farming pieces, obviously cost on individuals' homes to you know retrofit, upgrade, you know those, those things are massive massive things for you know for our town. But stagecoach is part of the mass transportation right. piece. Uh, I mean, and and uh, the use of transitioning to electric vehicles, including in the town. Uh, question, uh, and this is just because I don't know, the source of electricity for Bethel's plant, uh, electricity, that's hydro, isn't it, or is it? It's solar. The green backer is solar. Yeah, but green you're maker. talking about the main distribution system. Oh, I don't know. That's main distribution comes from Hydro Quebec. Yeah, oh, yeah I, don't. I thought you were talking Quebec. about our solar. The, I thought you were talking about the solar so thing we're a part of. When yeah. in our electric, <laughs> when we're the town, the city, and the the village is on a, got an electrical program. I like the. Through water GMP. 
Yeah, we get our Or is it just green. GMP? It's just GMP. I mean, we do right. do two things. We do Green Mountain Power, and then we do, do we are participating in a net metering, a solar right. net Credits. metering thing from Green Maple or Green but That Power. doesn't mean that we use any of their power. Right. No, no, no. Yeah. We, we have, we're, we're bought in, but that power could be in. going, that power credits, whatever could be Go going back to Connecticut. To yeah, we just yeah. allocate a percentage of it to them. So yeah. that's where we get our bills each month. We get two. We get okay. one from Green Mountain Power and one from them. Mm -hmm. So, well, that's, you know, that's an important piece for people to understand. Uh, there are some real questions about whether Hydro-Quebec is a carbon, it's not a carbon neutral place, so how we count that in the total is part of the issue. Well, I for think Vermont. the other thing that I, I haven't heard anybody talk about is the, the uh, um, like right in this town, the, the water generation of electricity, there is a, uh, what's that credit that we were always looking at? The state's looking to get a certain amount of credits. Oh, carbon, carbon credit. The carbon credits. Or? You know where those credits went? Those credits are sold to Connecticut. Yeah, they're always they're, they're not Vermont. Vermont. No, they're sold. And there is a boatload of solar projects and they water go, projects that they go to the exactly cities. the same thing. So if you want to do your climate change thing, you need to right. go back to the beginning. Here's my big my big piss me off. Excuse me. <laughs> is okay if we're making it in Vermont. Let's get credit for making it in Vermont. Ab exactly. Absolutely. But we're not. There, well, there's there's no, no legislation, no nothing that says that people can't just take their money and run. And, and so one of the yeah. with you, Vermont. So one of the one of the comments on this letter is to make sure that we are count the second bullet point is to make sure that all of the greenhouse gas emissions are accurately uh, measured and, and included, including that that comes from Hydro Quebec. Because it's hydro, there is significant methane produced every time the water level goes down in those uh, ba catch basins for Hydro Quebec, and they are, uh, Hydro Quebec tends to be more flat. Than, than gorges, uh, which means the water level goes up and it goes down, which means there's significant decay every time, every year as the, the, the record, the water goes through. And Hydro-Quebec is one of those places noted for uh, building on indigenous people's lands. Uh, so there are questions if we're going to count if we if we include Hydro Quebec as part of our our <laughs> uh, impact on the carbon, then those carbon credits really don't count. And even though we're selling them someplace else, we're using we're using them. It's I understand that part, but what I'm talking about is the is the part that we tell as being great. Which is the solar power and the, the little water, the little generating stations. They are the greatest things Vermont ever had. Well, no, they're not, because the value of those systems for Vermont is those carbon credits, or that's part of it. And we're not getting it. Well, it's going away. Right. And we're not doing anything. We're, and there's nothing you and I are going to do. It's the people up there that, up there. Montpelier and whatever, they've got to start saying, no, you can't, you can't do that. That's why we must comment. So um, just to go back to what Therese was starting on before, our next meeting is the 11th, and it feels like a very tight turnaround to invite those groups, have that discussion, and try to get comments in by the 15th. And I'm curious, uh, just to make sure we are doing things above board, if Let's say we, maybe not as a select board, but as individuals or just as interested parties in the town, invited representation from different groups like the Conservation Commission. And Energy. Select board, and select board members show up. Do we need to warn that as a meeting? 
Like if, if a meeting was done prior to the 11th, mm -hmm. if, do, would we need to warn <clears throat> that as an official meeting? It wouldn't hurt no. because, I mean, well, yeah, well. Unless it's official committee or. Well, if it's going to be, it's going to be multiple committees. She's right. saying it would be equity, inclusion, conservation. It wouldn't hurt to. Why not? I mean, okay. it's only a couple days in advance, and um, I don't think it would hurt to warn it just to cover all your bases. Right. Um, because so you could have a majority of any one of those committees come, right? Right. Or you'd have them respond directly to would the it, climate control initiatives, but you ask them to, instead of everybody coming up with their own ideas, you could ask the equity, inclusion, conservation, and energy to send comment based on the current town plan. Then you have control over what's, you know, instead of one committee right. to offer something that you guys have not backed, where you have supported the town plan. Well, and so part of my thought was like, here's just a hypothetical. Let's say we let those groups know about this, kind of like Jean did with this letter of mm -hmm. like putting it out there saying, you know, all interested parties convene on October 4th, which is the Monday before our select board meeting, put together the comments or the um, blanking on the word I want, but you know, yeah, the sort of list that they'd like to see, bring that to our meeting on the 11th. Mm -hmm. And so that's where I want to make sure, like, if a group did that, how, like, that we're not treading some line. And right. Not yeah, I mean, I would, I thing. would try to make sure you would warn it. My only concern would be that if you did it on the 4th, who's going to take the time to make sure that those are, is that already goals that you've approved that are in the town plan? Mm -hmm. And if they're not goals that you've approved in the town plan already, then... You, well, she it, changed riders midstream here, changed horses, and so. I don't know if you would have, we have yeah. to implement the town plan through zoning, but this comments wouldn't have to be, am I stretching that? or just, Well, that, I guess that was my next question. Do you see question. what I'm saying? Like, how much does it have to, does commentary to this party, which is informing the legislature, have to actually match our town plan and is more a commentary? Because th that's to me what it seems. It's not, mm -hmm. the town plan is very much the, like, we will, we will we're operate by these right. things we've set forth, whereas this is more the, like, we'd like the legislature it's to the bigger picture, I think. acknowledge and address. Much bigger than and, nothing. Yeah. So My, does it have to follow? I mean, the town plan's a great sort of starting place for each yeah. of those individuals. I don't know. I mean, I guess the... I, 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 it's hard to say. Does, I guess here's my concern about it, is if you don't, and everybody submits wild ideas, and then down the road, that committee, you know, it's, there's nothing, there's no framework. Whereas what you could do is you could put this link out on Front Porch Forum and Facebook, and you could ask residents of Bethel as residents, not as committee members or anything. So you could try to up your game by having residents answer and ask questions. Right. And I, I guess said, I was <coughs> I'm not really going, sure going to your interpretation because I was interpreting this as more commentary than what we would operate by but right. to, to sort of address your thought is like if if those groups all met came up with some things and then brought it to the select board then the select board is still acting like the gatekeepers right. to make sure it adheres to yeah. or is in line with Either the town plan or your own agenda or your own thoughts. Right. Yeah, I and I see your your point of like the work. Yeah, I'm not really individuals sure. putting it out there, but I think Jean's point was like the strength coming from direct leadership within the yeah. town to the legislature probably holds more weight than in twenty individuals from the same town. That's right? true. So that's the like. Yeah. Mm. The other option. Sort of yeah. I get what you're saying. Leaders. Yeah. The other option you could do is you could write to, we could send an email to the equity inclusion, to conservation, to energy, and ask them to send their comments directly on right. behalf of the town, but you could ask them to base it off from something you've already approved, which is the town plan. I'm not really sure how you want to do it. You, mm -hmm. you have options here. I'm just right. trying just to think about. Wanted to make sure if we, I know. If we went for an option of- I hadn't thought about it this much. I mean like this much, so honestly. To have a discussion making sure that we weren't breaking any laws. Yeah, yeah. Doing no, so. if you want to have a group discussion, I don't think it's a big deal. I just think that you should, I would warn it just to err just, on the side just of caution, don't you think? Just because if you get yeah, all of a sudden a quorum, meeting, so yeah, yeah. and plus do you want to encourage people to come? 
Yeah. So, and then if you had an off chance, you had three select board or, or, or a quorum of any of those committees, right, exactly. which you could, and equity yeah. inclusion is a small, two people could put a quorum of that one. Right, and I think that was my concern, was if, yeah. you, if you then invite these town committees and you start discussing business, yeah, right. now you're treading a very <laughs> slippery slope. <laughs> yeah, so you could do either, okay. uh, either way, Lindley. I'm, I'm just trying to think, I was just trying to kind of walk it through out loud, like what's what the would the selection board look like? How much time do you have to warn it? Prior to the meeting, uh, is it 48 or okay. 72 or 48 hours? Uh, usually it's a couple days before. Like we do a Friday for a Monday. I think you could yeah. do okay. Monday for a Wednesday. I think it's 48. Um, yeah. It's like an emergency meeting. Is emergency meeting is 24. But yeah. Okay. So I don't know what the select board wants to do, but. but so I, mean, <laughs> I think what would carry the most weight for our citizens of the town is to hold a meeting, whatever you title it, mm -hmm. invite our local representation to the meeting so that they're there. I mean, so le letters are great, Dickin. but letters are just letters, right? I mean, anybody can make a letter, throw it in there and say they're from Bethel, Vermont, right? Mm -hmm. But if our legislators are actually there and the group of people that want to attend show up and voice their concerns for or against, because, you know, I'm just saying like, you know, you know they could get 100,000 letters from all over Vermont, but maybe Bethel's letter is much different. And, you know, our legislators need to know what the people in our town are thinking and feeling, not just what the majority is. So, but. So, yeah, so if you guys, if you did, if someone was to, to do that, to take control and do a meeting and warn one, and, and as a, I would just warn as a big committee meeting, basically, select board, and we, all those, and then, you, all yeah, <laughs> exactly. And then invite them all, and then you would yeah. need someone to moderate it, and basically to come up with some framework of a letter to say these are, you know, kind of like we did with the VRORC grant. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. Whoever's here, and here's our ideas, and then we're going to put it together, right. and then yeah, you guys the could type board. it up, and then get the select board to approve it on the next select board meeting. Yeah. Okay. But some of these, not quite exactly what we're asking here, but similar things in the past have gone to town meeting day to be a non-binding resolution right. to be weighed in. It's that kind of right. thing. And I just, I just worry that we're just like, okay, we got, you know, 18 days to get it in, and right. now we're only taking a sample of the population that may be more for it or more against it to voice the large people and to get the backing of the select board. And it's like, you know, I don't know, I, I would feel uncomfortable backing something for or against it because I don't think we have enough time to talk to the people in town. Where I think mm -hmm. getting in front of your legislator and maybe having a meeting, like have it here with with uh, Kurt and Dick and, and and invite whoever wants to come, come and voice their opinion for this or against yeah. it. And, yeah, know, this, is, this is not about the legislature. Yeah, but at some point the legislature has to weigh in on this. No, the legislature has already weighed in it. This will be, they have established, the legislature has established the Vermont Climate Council. It is the council that has the charge of creating the plan. And the legislature, the legislature. Do they have the names of the council? Or? They yes, they, the they council have. has already been named, they've been meeting. They are drafting the plan. Do we have a local representation to that council or somebody that lives in No, the it's, it's a... Because again, I was just going to say maybe Some were appointed by the governor, some were appointed by this group, some appointed... But uh, the, the, the yeah. point is, this is a state-appointed okay. council who is developing the plan so the legislature's already voted the and said it on and, and passed it on. Basically said, here, fix, make this happen. Yeah, make that's work. right. Okay. That's, that's the that's the legislature has already acted. So what we're what <laughs> we are what we've been in what everybody in Vermont's been invited to do is to comment to the climate council yeah. on the nature of the plan that the climate council is preparing or putting together in order to meet the, the 
climate change. Is this a mandate change. that given to them by the legislature? It's the mandate given. Is this climate given? council having any type of formal meetings where the public can weigh into the? They are doing that now. That yes, there are public. some open meetings as well. Uh, to which people are invited, and I can get that information, send it out tomorrow. I, I just, uh, but the, I'm just, well, I'm the quest. My question is whether, in the spirit of a non-binding resolution kind of thing, the town of Bethel wants to make some sort of an effort of commenting. When you put this plan together, please make sure that it considers. Common sense. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. 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 and yeah. the other but, is right. But I what you're the, fact, yeah. the fact that carbon uh, points are going to Connecticut, are going to Connecticut. Yeah. let's make sure that's on the agenda. Mm -hmm. That's not an appropriate use of a plan that will ultimately reduce carbon. And so we want, so those are the kinds of comments that can be made. It's not that we're going to uh, commit Bethel to buying X, Y, Z or spending okay. X number of dollars. <clears throat> we do want the plan to be realistic in terms of what we as Bethel might be able to do. Right, sure, that makes sense. We don't want taxes to double. Right, yeah. But we recognize, <laughs> or at least, I recognize that we're going to have to transition off of carbon. Mm -hmm. Right. And, so, and that's a... So I guess you guys need to decide what you want to do. Did, you know, Lindley has a good idea, which is have a, a group meeting and everybody kind of brainstorm and come up with a list and do a submission. Or you could do a big public push on Front Porch Forum and Facebook and websites to get people on their own to submit comments. Or could do nothing. I'm trying to give you the three options here. <laughs> so push the residents, we have a meeting together, um, like Lindley's suggesting, or, you know, so I guess you have to decide here, what's your, what would you like to do as a? I think you should include representatives. I mean, that, what Chris's point is, you know, even if we write a letter, if they, if they hear it from their, their constituents face to face, it'll do more than that letter will ever do. I mean, the letter will be a document, so it's in writing. But they heard Ball Valley say, this is what we think we need to do. Whomever. Yeah. I'd... Well, and that's why, you know, often when there are things going to vote in the House or Senate, it's always best to call your representation mm -hmm. directly to voice your concern because, you know, your representation, whoever it is, usually already has their mind sort of made up already. And just getting a letter and reading it from Chris Jarvis and Bethel, they'll, okay, you know, but if you call them on the phone and say, you know, this is how this is going to impact me as a resident, uh, whatever it is, because I've done those calls in the past for like transportation funds and stuff like that. But I think the only thing I always like shudder myself, I just hate rushing stuff. And it just feels like well, you, you, need you to gotta have this in quickly. And we're then. talking about this <coughs> turnaround meeting and mm -hmm. do you get enough buy in in the meeting to, re to get a good enough representation mm -hmm. of the population, yeah. Yeah. or do you just get the typical six people in town that want to go and voice their opinion that happens okay. maybe not to be the overall consensus? Yeah. But, well, I uh, guess there you have to make a decision what yeah. you want to do. So I made But either way, I don't I mean, if it came from the select board or if it came from different groups of citizens or through our representation, you know, however they do that, I don't know if it necessarily has to come from the select board. I mean, uh, you know, I, I don't know what weight we carry on it really at this point. I mean, so I think what we're looking for is a, is a direction, right? Is the select board either want someone to organize this meeting for, you know, maybe like Lindley suggested Monday, October 4th, and, and organize that and, and do that, and then you guys are willing to sign something from the outcome of that on the 11th, or, yes, 11th, or, or do you just want a public push for people to fill it out on their own? So I, I feel like you have two choices here. So I don't know if you want to go. I, I know what I want to do. Let's see, what do you want to do here? I don't know. 
I know what I'm. You're doing. getting hung up. To, to I, I, talk, you know, my my thing would be <laughs> the typical grassroots. You know, contact your representatives directly, voice your concern because mm -hmm. the thing I fear in these things, regardless of what side of the issue it is, is we're going to get the same same people that are going to have similar voices that are going to speak for. 1,951 people in the town. Uh, and, and again, it's going to happen between now and Monday. Right. You know, so it's, it's not a lot of time to put a lot of thought. So I got two for grassroots so but far. I, right? you know, I think, Paul in, Paul's I think voices in the Chris's community grassroots. should be heard. <laughs> yeah. um, if, if we were to uh, have a meeting next, a special meeting next week with inviting everybody to do what, it, to kind of put some ideas together that might be part of a statement from the town of Bethel by the select board. Then the town, that same people, but also it's a second opportunity the Monday following when we have our meeting for people to participate and provide input to whatever we have, you know, identified the week before. So it's, it's two meetings, it's not just one in which the grassroots would have an opportunity uh, to but provide you'd know, by, you'd know by the time the agenda is being put together. Which is, be which would be like, yeah, because it was the 11th, I'll do it that Thursday before. Right. So we're not, just to be clear, we're not talking about a special select board meeting. No, no, that's yeah, yeah. correct. No, no, I just want we're to we're sure talking about a, yeah. a community-wide <laughs> hearing. Yeah, right, a right. community-wide yeah. hearing yeah. on, on shall Bethel respond, and if we respond, what are the main points we would like to make to the Climate Council? I, that's a... I mean, I think it just depends on who wants to organize it. I, I don't think it's a select board driven function at this point um, just because of the timeliness of it but I mean if you want to head that up and you know through you and other individuals and figure out when you would like to do it and and then not just warn it but you know advertise it so that others can be there on that time and date um, but I don't know if it's like for us to vote on I mean that's well, I guess what you would, I would want to see these people do this work and then you get this on the 11th and say, eh, we're not going to sign it. You know what I mean? Or we're not going to back it. I think that would be. Um, That's the advantage of warning, of having a warm meeting of the committees and invite the community to attend. You could always submit the minutes of that meeting to the Climate Council without putting it in front of the select board. That just popped in my head. You could say, okay, these are the people that were present. We invited all Bethel residents. There was a select board member present. There was or two or there was energy committee members. And then you could submit the minutes. That's kind of how you do a non-binding resolution. <clears throat> you submit the minutes when you vote on a non-binding resolution at a uh, town meeting. You send the minutes to whomever the powers that be, the governor, whoever is collecting the information for that. So you could just have a one-shot meeting and then submit those minutes. Whoever's taking your minutes would have to detail what your outcome is, and you could just submit those. So that's another thought. What, if, if you all tell me what you want to do, I'll try to organize it. I'm not going to commit to another meeting right now. Unfortunately, I've just, most days at 5 o'clock, there's no gas left. <laughs> and uh, so I'm saving them for twice a month here and a couple others, but to add more, I, I'm not, I'm just not going to do it. If you draft an agenda, you could just get it, just email Kelly, and uh, she'll get it out for you. She'll post it in all the right places and put it on the website, and you could ask her if you want it to go on Facebook or front porch forum, she can do that as well um, for you. And then um, there's not usually anything here on the hall on that Monday night anyways. So um, 
somebody just come to the office and get a key. And then you would just need to, somebody, you'd have to get a volunteer then to take the minutes of it. And then you'd submit those within five days to Kelly. They'd go on the website. But then you could also have a nice copy and submit it to the climate counselors. And then you could add it to the packet. At that point, if you decide you want to put it in front of the select board, you can. You guys can decide, I guess, what happens at that meeting. Since it's like, so, so nobody's committed to, to vote on, right. on the 11th, but yeah. I don't know. No, it seems like the, um, and Gene, if you're willing to put some energy into it, um, you know, it's, it seems like doing a meeting that specifically invites members of committees of, you know, committed town, town entities that are addressing these things and then also open to the public and like Chris yeah. was saying, like put it out on Facebook or couple different avenues. Yeah, and if you if you email Kelly and um, you know she can send it to the you know she can also send the invite to she, we probably have all the at email addresses for conservation commission energy planning whatever committees yeah. that you want to attend I'm sure Kelly would be happy to disseminate the information I'll let Kelly know that to expect an email from you Jean um, email okay. from Jean and then she can with an agenda and then she can send it to all those folks inviting them. And um, you could do, you could do planning or whatever, all of them, and then see what you got. And then um, there's a whiteboard here and markers and stuff, and you can kind of do it like we did the other meeting. So then, at the end, would we just get a copy of the meeting minutes at the select board level, or would we get a well, a draft to either put our name on or not? Maybe leave it up to that group that. to decide. Let the group decide. Yeah. You know, obviously you get the at the least we the get minutes, the um, yeah. But then, yeah, from there decide if the group <clears throat> wants to present it or. Right. Yeah. I mean, I think it's just kind of hard to commit to it until you have the living. You know, well, you this go. was the you know. Kind of what I thought well, was more the like, idea, like a template of yeah. You know, the idea things for things, that yeah. was to get the conversation going. It right. wasn't to right. say this is these are the points yeah. that that we want to. Yeah, and I think having it as a bigger conversation than just the select board is actually part of the importance okay. of it. So, yeah. all right. So. So when do we get to sue the state of Vermont? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Tomorrow. Will we still be alive yeah, at that I, point? I, I, think, <laughs> what, what I, I, I do think. All my attorneys are wrapping up the letter. I will, I will include some background <laughs> in that letter yeah. so that people understand what this is about. Um, the background is more important, I think, than, than this particular, particular piece. Um, did we nope. approve the meeting nope. minutes yet? So yeah. when we just approved the, um, so we had the meeting minutes from the 13th of September. And I thought the meeting minutes were put together very well. So thank you. Yes, Julie did a great job. It's always kind of when, when you get new mini meeting minutes, uh, like either like you get like, not enough or way too much. And I thought no, that, hers was, were great. that was a pretty good hers blend of the great. details with with the over I had overall. One super small amendment, which was uh, in the, under visitors, uh, filmed for, should probably be filmed by Susan Bettman. Oh, okay. That's me. Okay, I wrote that. Okay. Well, See, it wasn't even you, Julie. No, I think I wrote. I was feeling bad. I was going to pick on you on your first night. I think I wrote four. No, no, that was me. <laughs> I tell. But that was I'm, it. I'm the one who edited them after, so if I made any changes, that's on me. Um, but yeah, so no, well, there you go. You're not going to pick on it. <laughs> give her, a, give her right, some slack the first time around. There you go. <laughs> All right. It's soft. You're getting soft. There you go. <laughs> what is it? All right. Where's the, where's the ball? I don't, 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 don't even know you anymore. Okay. <laughs> you heard now. <laughs> They're poking the bear. <laughs> so I just need a, a, a motion to approve the meetings as amended. Meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Yeah, second. 
Okay, all right. <coughs> yeah, all right. Again. All right. So the other thing was just to remind people that the Bethel Com Community Board Festival is this weekend. So Friday, October 1st, there's a family fun uh, night, a fall carnival, if it's if weather permits, from 4.30 to 6.30 at the rec center. Games, races, face painting, skate park demo. Then Saturday, October 2nd, uh, the family fun run at the rec center. Adult or s older siblings with younger children, they want you to pre-register. Uh, it's from 11 to noon. And then, of course, vendors, exhibits, entertainment at the Common from 10 to 3 on Saturday, um, October 2nd, and WCVR will be do, doing a live broadcast from 10 to 2. Uh, the fire department doing a chicken barbecue and Yankee raffle, and then it lists um, things that are going on, the uh, Wear Valley School music students, cloggers, um, steel drums, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, then there's gonna be an art show for Susie Fedak. Um, here at Town Hall from 10 to 3. Bethel Women's Exhibit, Bethel Historical Society be open. Kimberly Bethel Krause. Energy Committee Exhibit. Um, Tracy's Pony Pulls will be our midday chicken pie suppers at St. Anthony at 5. Um, at Babes, there's going to be a music festival. Our music fest, excuse me, starts at 3. Um, $5 entry fee featuring both air, Green Mountain Roots, Drumstick, Full House, um, Rolling Doe's will be there, Moon and Stars Empanadas. So there's something for everybody. So this Friday, uh, family fun night, and then if the weather's good, and then Saturday, looks like everything goes from 10 to, you know, later whenever Babes is going to end. So like, that's going to be what? 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock, yeah. 10 to 10. So come to Bethel, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Saturday. With, with the Ford Fest going on, would, would um, Justin, is he going to be around at all? Or? I'm assuming that they were they were notified of it, so okay. I'd like to think that they it's always one nice or to both have will be around. So they they know about at it. Some point. I'll send them a reminder email. Yeah, Oscar and Justin, especially but, with you know the traffic know on Church it. Street and stuff like that. It's always kind of nice to have. Fast, ten to ten, but they are aware of it. So, but I'll send them a reminder email tomorrow. I think I saw him <laughs> driving the other day. No point. Could be. And there was a slew of communications there in the in the back. Planning DRB special meeting there for the uh, solid waste board. Transfer station. That's right. <laughs> Transfer station. Um, and so when um, when are we thinking that we'll start getting the first pieces of the budget? <laughs> I'm just, get through the I'm just, I'm just <laughs> asking. I mean, no, we think things are end? going so well. <laughs> <laughs> we are almost out the door. Yeah. No, no, no. no. Well, Paul said the gloves are off now. So, yeah, that's you know. right. No, no, it's fine. Are we thinking the end of October? Yeah. yeah. Is that we'll start seeing? Okay. Yeah. Because I think that's when we they started to poke out last year, right? The end yeah, of I think so. Yeah. Get some pieces. It'll be yeah. fine. I don't think it'll be, um, yeah, honestly, it's one piece that I'm struggling over. I just have to figure out in my head what I want to do. And then the rest of it, I mean, I can honestly, chunks of the budget are pretty, some of them are pretty easy to do. So, um, but yeah, nope, definitely at the end of October, we'll, we'll definitely okay. start with, um, I'm not sure I'll start with highway. That's, that's the one that I, I know it's the most money, but um, I just have a couple things I need to sit down with Alan and talk about and kind of hash out a couple things in my head. I need to sit down with Ryan and talk about a plan for next year, some work. So, but certainly the, you know, really if you get the other chunks of the budget out, um, that will be the last piece. Plus two, didn't see an email today from the state. We haven't seen salt prices yet. Cargill, American Rock Salt, they haven't put out pricing yet. So there's a little piece there that I haven't seen yet either. So I also need it. I need to get an estimate on closing pit places. I have a note on my desk. So you won't see the road budget at the end of October, but there's no reason I can't do Rex. So if I know Dietrich's going to be on vacation mm -hmm. for two weeks, but certainly kick out a chunk of it by the end. Do we have any Monday meetings coming up in the next month or two that are going to be holiday driven or that we need to think of? An I don't think so. Or are we good? I don't think so. I think you're all set for October. 
Can you just person October 11th is a holiday. Yeah. Well, is that a town holiday? Probably, but I usually work. So I guess sometimes I don't think about it, but probably it is. We're probably closed, but we, we usually we have meetings even if we're closed. So I, mean, I feel like in the past we've still... We've, we've still met. Really and, yeah, it's fine. It gives me a day to work with uh, anyone in the office. So it doesn't... I don't... Find I have no problem. Um, so I know in around the holidays usually we move a meeting or two. Sometimes around Christmas, but I think we're all set. I mean, Thanksgiving we usually don't. If anything, it depends on when Christmas falls. And frankly, I haven't looked... <laughs> I think about Christmas. So I, I saw something the other day that said, I don't know, so many weeks no. to Christmas. I was like, gosh, stop yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So, no, I, unless you all want to move that October meeting, I'm fine with working that day. I don't, I'm coming into a meeting. I don't have problems. So, everybody good with the, the 11th? Keeping that meeting the same? Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Anything else to come before the board? Mm-hmm. Doug's been awful quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got a just a small thing, I guess. Um, I really don't want to be a complainer, but I, I just see like 1.2 miles of our road that just oh, they did a they graded it today. They did a great job. The road is smooth as this tabletop, but the berms are still there. So if it rains, the water won't get off the road. There's a couple places where the ditches got plugged and then they spilled out the road and they graded over that, but they didn't clean up that piece of ditch that's just going to, as soon as it rains again, it's going to do it all over again. Sanders? No, my road. Chris go from Chris Go from the pond on the back side to the bridge that the interstate crosses the interstate. So Christian Hill from the Ansel Pond? From the top to down to the interstate. Bridge. You said just Ansel yeah, that's Pond. That's all I've seen. So what I'm saying is I've seen that much. I don't. I can't believe they're doing a lot different anywhere else. Okay, so they filled in the ditch and no, left they didn't. firm. The rain did it. The oh, rain okay. ruined the ditch, but they but didn't, they didn't clean out the ditches. Clean, really okay, didn't fix that. All right, didn't clean ditch and they left the berm. Okay, gotcha. So, and the they didn't the berm has been there all summer. All right, they just graded the center of the road, made it beautiful. The, the center of the road is beautiful. Yeah, but he left the berm. But yeah. I'll have to if, te- if I'll have text any rain at all. It's just going to be gone again soon. All right, I'll I'll text Hazen in We've the morning. We've conversation. Just, yeah. Like, well, Alan's off for a couple or days. Or just go up there and cut some wheat poles or something. So I'll text Hazen in the but... morning and tell him, you know, berm out and uh, you can remove the berm and uh, you've got to do some greater ditching. I mean, some and, of it, um, I could walk down 100 yards from my house with a hand shovel and in 35 seconds I could fix it. Yeah. Done. Dave's going to take care yeah. of it. Yeah. I'm going to volunteer this time. Okay, I heard it. I don't want to hear any bitching about, you know, doing that. that someone told me not to touch it because it's not my, di- not my business. Remove it's not your dick berm. That's, that's could correct. Be. <laughs> on. We could put a sign. If we put a sign that says Dave's yeah. ditch. We could. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, I'll, I'll text Hazen in the morning. and um, just yeah. Because if he's doing it there, he's doing it in other places. And he, and he just doesn't, probably just doesn't know. So I'll, I'll it's send unfortunate, but they're going to have to, do, you know, pull the grade over, stop, climb down, take the shovel, and move on. Yeah, and also too, if he needs to practice at, at ditching using the grader, then then that's the other thing too. That's but, a and that, and that to, to me, that's what we should be doing. We should put put somebody there, just put him in the grader, and say, okay, you don't have to do 2.5 miles today. I want you to learn to do something right for 100 yards. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, and we did have some. that done, and eventually you'll do that 2.5 miles, and you'll we'll do it all right. Yeah, and we did bring someone down, so and maybe we need to see, well, Stu's gone, but bring down Todd and have him do some more some more training with him, too. So, all right. Well, I'll send uh, Hazen a text message in the morning and just tell him, hey. And then they won't maybe not backtrack tomorrow, but at least moving forward where he's going, he can deal with it right. tomorrow, yeah. and then I can have Alan backtrack. If nobody ever said anything, nobody knows. Except, I agree. Mm-hmm. I totally agree. We so, have lost it shitload of material because there used to be a back ditch right at the top of what we call the letter S. <laughs> and now you can't, there's no material on the road, so the road is so low you can't use that back ditch, which is a beautiful back ditch for saving that hill. Mm-hmm. But you can't get down to it right. because you're already, your road's already down to the road. That's because we don't put any material on the road yeah. on a regular basis. Exactly. No, which is true. You don't. Anyway, I've rained it enough dust. But no, I will send him a text message in the morning and, uh, and let him know. I'll give him a buzz. So. Sounds good. Thank you. 
Make, Make a motion. Adjourn. We adjourn. <laughs> Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.